She said she had uh, answered the door. She thought it was somebody coming for the, the party, maybe early. And he said, um, identified himself as a police officer, said, I'd like to come in. It was New Year's Eve. They were having a New Year's Eve party. Marilyn Redmond wasn't expecting a police officer at the party, but she welcomed him in. There was cooking going on in the kitchen, everything set up for a party. Time was turning from 1980 to 1981. Joe Brownlee didn't expect his year to end and begin there too. I was at my house. I got a call that uh, they wanted me to go to uh, North Phoenix. We've got a uh, very unusual, uh, difficult homicide. We need you. Joe Brownlee was a prosecuting attorney for Maricopa County. When he entered the house that night, Joe found himself among detectives and investigators inside the Redmond family home. Now, a gruesome crime scene. The crimes occurred in the master bedroom. Patrick Redmond was bound and uh, had a sock in his mouth, and his throat had been slit ear to ear. The two shots to the head killed him. Pat was Marilyn's husband. Helen Phelps, Pat's mother-in-law, was also found restrained, arms tied behind her back, sock in her mouth, shot twice in the back of her head. Both of those bodies were shot execution style. There were three victims, though. Patrick Redmond's wife, Marilyn, was also shot. But something happened. One bullet left, and that bullet went back of the head of Marilyn Redmond and out her mouth, and she survived. It was clear, it was a hit, it was an assassination. But the why, why was Pat Redmond targeted? That took a while to, to figure out. For all anybody knew, the Redmond family had no enemies. Pat and his wife Marilyn were well liked. Pat ran a printing business on the west side of town called Graphic Dimensions with his partner, Ron Lukasik. Business was going well, life was good. So why was the Redmond family taken down like this? And who were these three men who carried out the executions? Those answers were hidden nearly 1,800 miles away. Sunday, I got a call in January, I believe, that they had two gang members that they thought were responsible for a triple murder that had happened just before Thanksgiving in Chicago. Greg Owen was head of gang prosecutions for Cook County, Illinois. At the time, one particularly violent gang kept making headlines. It was more than a gang, it was a murder for hire organization called the Royal Family. With the help of a government informant, Three alleged killers of the Thanksgiving murder were identified. Roger Lee Cochise Collins, William Bracey, Murray Hooper. That informant doesn't stop there. He actually called me and said, I have some more stuff to tell you about, about another murder. Another murder that involves Murray Hooper and William Bracey, but not in Chicago. He's telling me all about this murder in Phoenix, which I knew nothing about. About a murder on New Year's Eve and how he had picked them up at the airport. They were actually having an argument in the car, Bracey and Hooper. While they're in the car, Bracey and Hooper find out they messed up, big time. Marilyn Redmond had survived. I can't believe you're so stupid. You only shot her one time. I said, I need more bullets. Why didn't you say something? So I get on the phone, I call Maricopa County DA, and they get all freaked out. They go, I think some of our people are there in Chicago right now. I go, you're kidding me. I have no knowledge. All of a sudden, I meet Joe Brownlee. Simultaneously unfolding in Phoenix, another informant had emerged. A woman had come forward to Phoenix authorities. She knew Murray Hooper and William Bracey. They were staying with her while running a drug ring and she knew who the third person was in the Redmond house that night because his car was the getaway car 
The third killer was a gentleman who had been a police officer, and that was Ed McCall. At the Phoenix Police Department? At the Phoenix Police Department. At first, are you trying to figure out how these two people from Chicago and this former Phoenix cop even get together in the first place? Of course, of course. And what'd you find? Well, we found that there was a uh, fellow locally that uh, was Robert Cruz, went by Bobby Cruz. Robert Cruz becomes the key connection to the three New Year's Eve hitmen with an unexpected tie. What did Pat Redman have to do with these three men? Bobby Cruz um, had a contact in Las Vegas at one of the casinos. He was uh, connected to uh, organized crime in Chicago. Something was in the works, but under wraps. Pat Redman was a, was a problem. What do you mean? A murder in Phoenix and some people involved and then somebody's related to the mafia? I didn't even know what he was talking about. It sounded far-fetched, but <laughs> it wasn't far-fetched at all. It was right on. Who better to explain how mafia connections could trickle down from New York to Chicago to Las Vegas to Phoenix? Testing one, two, three. Then the former underboss of the Gambino family and one of the most prolific mafia hitmen to ever live. My name is Salvatore Gravano, but I'm probably better known as Sammy the Bull. Money, connections, power, and greed. All of those things control everything, all the time. 